Greetings, Kerbonauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and today I am bringing you a look into how I make the movies for Project Odyssey and Project Gateway. As you can see here, the way it begins is in the vehicle assembly building. We go in and we build ourselves a set. We make whatever it is we're going to want to run our little kerbals around inside of, and then we just put it out on the launch pad. And after that, it's time to just set up some cameras and then tell it to run through. So let's take a look at how the camera gets set up. With the curb cam mod installed, I simply press F8 and then I can go in and do things like set up a new simple path, make it relative to something that isn't moving, uh, move the camera around with the different camera controls, and then once I have it in the right position, I can tell it that I want a new keyframe at that location. You can see that button in the bottom middle of that dialog box right there. After I've done that, then I move to a new location, set up a new keyframe, I give it some example run-throughs before I finally actually try to record the real thing. We have that first point that we want set up now, and we're moving outside in order to set up an additional point. So we'll just shift the camera around a little bit, and then we hit new keyframe there, and now we've got two keyframes. So I can click on view, whenever one keyframe is selected to go and look at where that particular one was and I can hit play in order to run them between those two points and it'll try to smoothly interpolate between those. Once all that's done, I simply press play one last time and then try to quickly hit F2 to hide the user interface so that as we're watching him walk down the hall, we're not actually seeing anything other than what's going on in the scene. It helps a lot if you put a two second delay on the first keyframe actually beginning to move away. That way you won't have to worry as much about trying to get that F2 button pressed as fast as you possibly can. You get that little extra delay in order to press that button. Besides, what's going to happen is you're gonna go back and edit this all anyway, and those little extra times allow you to set exactly where you want your cuts to be. Now we've moved him back down the hallway to about where he started, but he's on the right-hand side instead of the left-hand side. However, the actual fly-through here is the exact same. So what this means is now I have two copies of him walking down the hall, one on the right, one on the left. I currently use PowerDirector to do all of my editing of all the videos and in there they have a feature where you can put two things where it's a split screen basically and the guy that's walking on the left is seen in one part and the guy on the right is in the other part and when we combine them together they look like this. Of us, we're going to need to keep morale up somehow and this is something she thinks will help. Well. The next thing I did for that opening scene was I decided on a building that I wanted to do a fly into on and assuming that this was like the barracks where everybody's staying or something and I figured I'd put up a little banner that says what it is like base housing and then do a fly up so that it looks like we're going into the window and we set up that path and then tried it out without anything on it once and then we try it again to see if we can get that path in and out like this one is so that we can go in and then the second one is so that we can come out when the whole scene is over that ends up looking like this why does she think we need new uniforms i like mine she now before we go any further, let's actually take a look at this in the vehicle assembly building. You can see that there are eight little pods up here because I knew that I was going to want to bring out all eight of the Kerbals in Project Odyssey and I wanted a way to put them into something that I could then just pop them out and run them down here and inside this hall. So when we look in the hall, you can see that this is what they were walking down, although technically I had them standing here and walking in this direction. But in a moment, what you're going to see is they're going to come through this door, right? Let's see if I can get in here. Ah, it's really hard to get at it right now. But you're going to see that they're going to come in this door with the camera being somewhere over there watching them come in. So the basic idea here is that I have reused this hallway to make it look like they were walking down a hallway and then they turned a door. So I have them walk this way once, and then I have them walk this way once and turn in the door, and it all comes together in the scene 
as if it was one big long hallway. There's really, when from the audience's point of view, there's no way of really knowing that this door is actually the room they're about to walk into. So it, it just it gives that illusion of everything being much larger than it really is. If we take a quick look inside here, you can see that all I did was I set up a sort of locker room thing with these are these lights are actually supposed to or no 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 these engines I'm saying these engines are supposed to be like shower heads and stuff and I got lights and these different parts to make it look like they have somewhere to sit. It's a little bit high tech, but a little bit low tech because they're all on wooden pallets. We got some grates down there for the water to run down into. Naturally, you need your toxic fuel sitting in a locker room, right? You gotta have that. Pipes all around, some grates for air ventilation and stuff. Uh, all of this coming from a bunch of different mods like LLL and we got B9, regular stock. We got some pipes from, I don't even remember what. Those are bargain rockets. Uh, these are B9 ladders to make lighting on the top. Some more bargain rocket stuff over here to make this laundry room. And uh, yeah, so that's about it from the outside. Lots of batteries on top to make sure that the lights running for however long they're going to be don't make it run out of power. And yeah, okay, so let's go look at how some more of this is actually put together in the uh, video editor. So as I was saying, now we need to move into the actual shower scene. So this time, we're going to set up a new path and set up some new key points and have them fly, have it fly through where we see them coming through the door. And they're gonna be talking while they come through the door and we're going to do both of them walking at the same time. So right here, you're seeing the initial setup of where I think I'm going to wanna to get the camera. I'm trying to angle it in between those two posts right there so that in the middle of the screen, we're going to be able to see them come around the door and go past those posts. I'm giving it a try right here to see what the fly through looks like. So imagining that I'll be uh, moving around the Kerbal right there after I get him lined up with the door and imagining in my mind what it would look like, how fast he'd be going as he was coming around that corner and going past that gap in those two pillars, I take a look at it like this and then I actually give it a try with the Kerbal to see what it's gonna look like with him. But before that can happen, I want to imagine what the whole fly through is going to look like. So next up, I try to set the camera so that it now comes in between those gaps there and allows me to see as if now right here, I'm a picturing in my mind that he's walking past this opening and going over to the other side where you can see the plunger there. I get the camera all lined up using those little uh, rotate right and left, shift the camera right and left, up and down, side decide all those little controls in the bottom left panel of that curb cam thing you can see right there once all of that is done then we can see fly through one more time I'm going to run this one at five times normal speed just because I think you get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. We can move on to the next part where here we're setting up what we want to do for having him come through the door. First, I'll flip on the lights on the ceiling here, and then we're going to take a look at where we want him positioned. So I want to get him over near the door where he'll look like he's coming through the door right as the camera is actually starting to move. Now there's going to be two Kerbals in this scene, but I only can only I can only move one at a time. So right here we're showing the first one coming through the door and he's going to go across the entire room. And sometimes it can be a little hard to get your bearings when the camera is moving around like this. So you saw me right there rotate just a little bit like, okay, which way do I go? Oh, over here. And then uh, at the very end here, he walks up on that plunger because again, it's a little hard to see what's going on. But ultimately we get him moving across the room and then we pan through here and all of this will somehow be cut together in order to make the actual scene. Using the exact same fly through path, we've gone back out to where now I'm waiting a certain amount of time to make sure that the first guy will have been able to walk in when the second guy starts his path. And so now he's going to look like he came in just behind the first one, but instead of going all the way across to where the plunger is, he just goes down through the middle. We cut it all together in the video editor and then it looks like this. Something she thinks will help. Well, fine with me, I suppose. I'm tired of walking around with a helmet on all the time when I don't need one anyway, like you need to do with these old suits. 
She says they'll be ready when we're done with our showers. Anyway, so how are the cathane scans going? I heard you're almost ready to tell. The next scene I had in my head was of Valentina, whose idea this was in the first place to get their new suits, to be in the room where they're uh, still getting ready, like they're washing up or something like that. And I figured she'd be pacing back and forth, waiting for them to finish and say something, okay, almost ready, and there they are. And then she would walk down the hallway and go into the guys and say that here's your suits and you're gonna love them and everything. So I've set up the path that takes her down the corridor there. And I also need to get all the guys that are going to be in the shower room here ready for when she turns the corner you can see some of their heads now they're already wearing their suits because I've already transitioned over to having her in her suit but I didn't want it to look like they were in theirs yet so when you see them inside this room here I'm trying to make it where you only see little bits of their heads and their uh, their actual suits don't show up except Krantz who's in white who's already in white even when he's not in his normal suit so that makes it look all the same so here I am now recording the part where Valentina would be pacing back and forth. The camera's all set up. I figure once I get this into the editor, the video editor, then I can overlay the voice where she's actually talking about it. And then she comes around the corner, goes down the hallway, says, I hope you're ready, boys. Here I come, that sort of thing. She gets to the corner. You can't actually see them in their suits yet for the most part. So it's keeping that illusion that they aren't actually in their suits yet. She turns the corner and says that you're going to love them. After that, we cut to a scene where Valentina has entered into the shower room and everybody now finally has all their suits on. And one by one, she's going to go through and say, okay, this is the color for you and this is the color for you based on their job title and what their role is in the KSC here. So when she does that, I wanna have a pan through where we cut back and forth to looking at each guy and then looking back at her moving to the next one and then back to each guy. So by taking this pan where we go across the room like this, we're able to get one long scene or one long clip, I guess, where then I can snip that up into little bits. And those little bits will then get interleaved with me going in and taking a look at each individual Kerbal up close. So now the camera is all set up, so I activate it, I hit play, hit F2 to take away the user interface, and start moving her around, imagining that she's going one by one to each guy. Now this is where I'm actually putting together the clip that's going to get used to actually show her, as it's snipped together, talking to each individual guy. Then after that, we move into making actual close-ups of each guy. So as she goes by, we'll uh, flip the camera around and we'll look at him and then she'll, we'll see her and then we'll flip the camera and we'll look at him again. But this is actually done as one scene as well so that everything will get interleaved later. But right here, we're just going to set up a look at one guy and then the next guy and then the next guy. There's a whole bunch of this kind of camera positioning and editing and zooming in and zooming out and recording, so I'm speeding up past all of this at four times normal speed. I get asked a lot how long it takes to set all this stuff up and I would say that in order to create the set in the first place it probably took me a couple hours just positioning everything and making sure that I had all the parts from the different mods that I was interested in having in the scene then going through and setting up all the cameras and clipping all the stuff like recording all the different clips and everything that takes so oh, I don't know maybe uh, another hour or two to put all that together then finally we go into the editor and in the editor I have to put all the clips in and then I have to snip them up and cut out all the parts that you don't want to see like all this stuff where you can see the curb cam interface in the upper left I have to clip all that out I have to put the clips together that takes a couple hours so ultimately it can take about two hours Hours probably for each minute of in-game film that you get to see. 
After all the scenes where everybody gets their individual close-up shot, I wanted to set up one final one where everybody's jumping up and down, celebrating the fact that they now have these new uniforms, and it's awesome. In order to do that, I have to do another split screen where I'm going to do one screen down the middle, one on the left and one on the right, and everybody's jumping up and down in their individual screens, and then I clip them all together again in order to make it look like it was actually one thing. To do that, I have to set one specific camera to look at the whole thing so that nothing's moving because that makes it a lot easier if nothing's moving and then uh, I just can put those individual clips there now one kind of funny interesting thing I never noticed before but look as I'm jumping up and down here all the mouths and all the kerbals out there are opening and closing so for whatever reason look at this <laughs> every time you jump everyone else is like yay or something i don't know what they're doing anyway uh but by going back and forth here now you can see that i'm switching the camera well i'm switching control from one guy to the next while the camera isn't moving and that's how we're going to get all those put together the last thing I do after all the clips are put together is I actually record and then I use a uh, special software that also came with PowerDirector in order to convert my voice into Kerbal voice. And also in this particular video I got my daughter to play Valentina and I converted her voice to sound down like she was maybe this uh, little four-year-old girl even though she's actually 11. Alright now, let's see how you guys look. Alright now. Let's see how you guys look. Okay, everyone, let's get back to work. We have more launches to prepare. Okay, everyone, let's get back to work. We have more launches to prepare. And now, with everything finally put together, here's what it looks like. Why does she think we need new uniforms? I like mine. She thinks with only eight of us, we're going to need to keep morale up somehow, and this is something she thinks will help. Well, fine with me, I suppose. I'm tired of walking around with a helmet on all the time when I don't need one anyway, like you need to do with these old suits. She says we'll be ready when we're done with our showers. Anyway, so how are the cathane scans going? I heard you're almost ready to tell. Almost? Almost? There! Your new suits are ready. I hope you're decent, boys, because here I come. I just know you're gonna love them. All right, now, let's see how you guys look. Kranz, you distinguished Snow White. Bob, yours is black for being first commander. Bill and Jeb, you're yellow for second command. Kessel and Neil, you get blue for science and medical. And finally, Joseph and I will have dark orange represent being part of engineering. This is awesome! Yay! No more helmets! Yeah, this is very cool! Great idea, Valentina. Whoa. Okay, everyone, let's get back to work. We have more launches to prepare. Kesla? Are you okay? Okay, Kerbinauts, that's going to do it. One last little comment, one little hint is remember to turn off your mouse when you're making these videos. So, good luck with your interludes and good luck in Kerbal Space Program. Until next time, I will see you later, Kerbinauts.